in our previous session we have seen how to create orders table and also we have seen how to create pending orders table we have worked on payment page now what we are going to do whatever items the user has ordered once the user clicks on pay offline whatever items the user is having inside the cart that item should be submitted inside the orders table before telling anything let me just show you the demo what we are going to perform okay now you can see this is my demo project and inside this cart i am having zero items and no user is logged in here now i'm just going to add this add to cart i have just added this shoes okay which is having 5000 as the price and the item is added and total price is 5000 i'm going to add this dairy milk okay now the total price is 5040 again i'm just going to add this one okay apple i'll just add this add to cart and now the total price is 5240 and totally i am having three items inside the cart i'll just click on cart now three items are been displayed for me i'll just click on checkout now user is not logged in so i'm redirected to login page okay i have already registered one user i'm just going to log in using that user i'll click on login successfully logged in okay as soon as i log in i will be redirected to payment page now here i am having two options upi payment and pay offline this upi we are going to see when we host this website online as of now we are just going to work on this pay offline as soon as i click on this pay offline whatever items i am having inside the cart that will be submitted you can see orders are submitted successfully now once i click on ok i will be redirected to user profile okay whatever you can see you have one pending order as soon as i click on order details the order will be displayed the total amount will be displayed totally three products the user has ordered invoice number is generated date of the order and here i am having whether the payment is completed or not it is not complete and here i am having status to confirm okay confirm we are not going to work as of now but as soon as i click on confirm the user can pay the payment okay user will be having separate payment page okay that we are not going to see in this session later on we are going to work on that okay once we submit this order later on we are going to work with user dashboard page where user can see all the orders you can see pending orders user is having only one pending order when user can click on edit account user can edit the account user can see his orders user can delete the account here i am having delete account don't delete an account and finally i am having here logout option okay these are the options user can see totally i am having one order and inside this table let me just show you whatever items i was having inside the cart as soon as i click on pay offline whatever items the data is having that will be stored inside orders table so that is the reason we have already created orders table in previous session if you have not created then please create order session only then you will be able to follow this particular session now here this is my demo database and inside this i'm having user orders you can see amount due invoice number is generated total products i'm having three order date and finally order status okay everything will be stored and also i'm having order id and user id okay whichever user has done the payment that user id will be stored here okay this is how the data will be submitted inside this table as well okay we are going to see how to insert the data how to access the total amount how to access total products everything we are going to see okay this is what we are going to create now now let me just come to my project now here i'm having only one item inside the cart i'll just click on cart i'll click on checkout user is not logged in so here i'm having this i'll just write here khanam password is 1234 login login successful okay as soon as i click on login successful i am redirected to payment.php now as soon as i click on pay offline i am redirected to orders.php and inside this i am having user id is equal to 1 because for khanam i am having the user id as 1 now in this order.php we are going to write the entire logic of how the order should be submitted and how the data should be stored inside orders table okay now let me just come here now inside orders.php we are going to write the code now we have already created this orders.php in our previous session now in this first i'm just going to include connect.php and functions file because we are going to work with databases so first we have to connect to the database and also we need user ip address so we are going to include functions file as well now i'll just come to payment.php and from here i'm just going to copy these two lines of code i'll copy this one and here i'm just going to paste that one i'll just close this style.css 
and also I am just going to close this checkout.php. I will save this. Now below this let me just write one echo. Echo I will just write here hello. Okay, only to see whether it is working or not. I will save this. I will refresh this one. Now you can see here I am having this hello which means that it is working completely fine. Now I will just remove this. I have just included connect.php file and I have included this functions file. Now what I am going to do, I have to access the user id address. Now I have to access this user id. So for that we are just going to use get method. I will be writing here if is set. Okay, this pattern we have seen plenty of times. So now you will be very much comfortable with this kind of pattern. Now here I will be writing get method and inside this I am just going to pass this user id. Okay, whatever variable we have created here. Okay, this particular variable I am just going to copy this one. This is called as get variable. I will copy this. I am just going to access that one. What I am telling if this variable is set then I just have to access the value for that. Here I will be creating one variable user id. And I am just going to initialize the value as this one. I will copy this and here I am just going to paste that one. What I am doing here, if this particular variable is set, then whatever value I am having inside this variable, I am accessing that one. I am storing inside this variable. Okay, this is what I have done. Now here if I just write here echo, I will be writing here user id. I will save this. I will refresh this one. Now you can see here one is printed because user id is equal to one. Now suppose if I just write here 5, I will enter, you can see 5 is printed. Okay, whatever value this user id is having, that will be printed. Using this user id, we can get the unique user. Now again, let me just come here, I will just write here 1. Because we are having only one user, so I just need here, user id is equal to 1. Now I will come here, I will just remove this one. Okay, now we have accessed this one. Now next what we are going to do, we have to count the number of items and also we have to get the total price of that items. Below this if, I am just going to write one comment. Okay, first I just want to get the total price and also I just need all the items. Okay, how many items are present inside the cart that I have to access. So below this, first I have to get the IP address of the user because we are having the unique user ID. And inside the cart, we have stored the IP address. So first I have to access the IP address. Now here I am just going to write get IP address. Okay, you can give any variable name is equal to inside this functions folder. We have already created the function to get the IP address. I am just going to copy this and here I am just going to paste that one. Okay, whatever IP address I am getting that will be stored inside this variable. Now why I am doing this because now I am one user, I have ordered multiple items and for multiple items the same IP address will be stored. So from cart table, I am just going to access the same IP address items and I am just going to count how many item is having the same IP address and using that I am just going to count the total price. Now I got this one. Now below this I am just going to initialize total price total price is equal to 0. Okay, initially I am just going to assign it as 0. Later on based on the condition we are just going to increase the value. Now here I am just going to write the query. I will just write here cart query and also I just want to write here price. Okay, whatever variable name you want you can give. Inside this I will be writing select star from cart table. Okay, cart details. Cart details. Okay, this is my table name where IP address okay whatever IP address I am having inside the cart where IP address is equal to this particular IP address okay our IP address is varchar so I am just wrapping inside double quotes okay I am just using here single quotes because here I am having double quotes and here I am having double quotes so I am just wrapping inside single quotes this IP address whatever IP address I am getting from here if this is equal to whatever IP address that is present inside the cart I am just going to access that particular row. Okay, now let me just show you what I am telling. I will just come here. I will come to demo project. Now this user is having one pending order. Now again I will just come to home. Now from here again this user is going to order this one. Again this user will order this one. Okay, now totally two items the user has ordered. Now user is come. user will come to cart, check out, pay offline, ok. Now you can see user is having two pending orders. When user clicks on user orders, the data will be stored here. Okay, all the data will be stored. And inside the cart, 
okay let me just show you again i'll just come to home now again the user is going to order this and user is going to order this now i'll just come to table now inside this cart details two items i'm having okay two data i'm having and for both the data i'm having the same ip address okay let it load you can see for both i'm having the same ip address now using this ip address i'm just going to access these two values so for that now this ip address belongs to same user and same user has ordered this particular items so for that we are just going to access this okay now using this query i'll be getting both the products i'll be getting both the products because ip address is getting matched here and also ip address is getting matched here now once it is done i'm just going to write here result result cart price result cart price and inside this i'm just going to execute this query using this my sqli query and this is going to take two parameters first is our connection variable and second wherever we have written this query i'm just going to copy this and here i'm just going to paste okay what we have done i have just included this connect.php functions folder i have accessed the user id i am getting the ip address i have initialized the total price as 0 and here i am just selecting the data from the cart details table where my ip address is getting matched with this ip address if both are getting matched i am selecting all the data and here i have just executed this query now once i execute this query now you can see totally i am having two items now i have to count this number of rows how many result i got from here i just have to count that one so here i am just going to write here count let me just write the proper spelling count count products okay total products i am just going to count is equal to using my sqli num rows i can count the number of rows present inside the database now from this query i will be getting two as my result so it is going to count that one i will just copy this and inside this i am just going to pass that now it is going to give me the result as two now below this what i am going to do i am just going to fetch the product id whatever product id i am having for this particular card let me just come here now inside this you can see i am having product id product id 3 and product id 14 i just have to access this particular product id okay now, now i am having multiple items so i just have to wrap inside while loop here i will be writing while inside this i am just going to create one variable i will just write here row price and is, is equal to my sql i fetch array or fetch asoc based on the condition and inside this i am just going to pass this particular variable i will just copy this variable and here i am just going to pass that one now inside this i just have to fetch the product id whatever id i am having inside the cart table i just have to fetch that one so here i am just going to write product id okay this is the variable name is equal to row price and inside this i am just going to pass this product id okay whatever column name i am having inside the table okay this particular column name i just have to pass that one i'll just write here product id i'll copy this and here i'm just going to paste that one okay this is the variable and this is the column name and using this row price i'm just going to access the product id each and every time this while loop is going to run and how many items that user has ordered it is going to fetch that one now once i get this product id using this product id i have to match with the products present inside the products table so for that we are just going to write another query here i'll just copy the same query from here i'll paste here now instead of this select query i'm just going to write here select product select product let me just write here select product select star from products table where my product id okay this is the column name i'll copy and here whatever i'm writing here that is the column name present inside the product table where my product id is equal to whatever id i am getting from here is equal to this one i'll copy this and here i'm going to paste okay this is the variable okay this one and this one should be same and this the column name whatever i'm having inside the products table this is the column name okay once i get this product id first i'm having the product id as okay let me just show you first i'm having the product id as 3 so what it is going to do first it is going to get the product id as 3 it is going to fetch that product from the products table again it is going to run then next i'm having the product as 14 again it is going to match with that product it is going to fetch that product for me now once i get this one i have to execute this query 
now for product id i don't have to wrap inside this single quotes because it is integer only for ip address i'm just wrapping this one now i'm just going to execute this query i'll copy this here i'm just going to paste now instead of this select cart price i'll just write here run price okay whatever you want you can write let me just write here run price my sql i query i'll just copy this variable and here i'm just going to paste that one okay for this query we have executed here and for this query we are just going to execute here now from this products table i have to fetch the price so here i'm just going to write while and inside this while i'll just write here row product price here i'll be writing my sql i fetch array and inside this i'm just going to pass this one i'll copy this one okay same pattern i'm repeating so you don't have to get confused whatever we have done here i am just doing the same thing here now instead of fetching the product id from products table i'm just going to fetch the price now each and every time i have to fetch the price and that price i'm just going to store inside the array and this pattern we have already seen when we created the function for total price okay if you want you can refer that particular video creating the function for total price or else you can just watch this video okay that is more than enough now below this i'm just going to write here product price product price is equal to i'll copy this one and here i'm just going to paste is equal to product price whatever i'm having inside the table let me just copy this and here i'm just going to paste okay this is the column name this is the variable and this is the variable whatever we have created here okay now i have fetched the product price but each and every time i have to store the product price inside the array so here i'm just going to write array i'll just open this one and here i'm just going to close okay all the prices will be stored inside the array okay array we have already seen what is array and how the data will be stored inside array now after that i just have to get the sum below this i'm just going to copy the same line now instead of this array i'll just write here array sum now all the array will be stored inside this variable i'll copy this one i'm just going to remove this and here i'm just going to paste that one i'll just remove one bracket from here now first what i have done i'm just selecting the products whatever product id i'm getting from here i'm selecting the product from the products table i'm executing that one now inside this while loop i'm just going to fetch the price and that price i'm just going to store inside the array once i get the price i'm just going to sum that one okay these are the methods in php okay you don't have to create you don't have to create any logic for that these are the built in methods that are already present inside php okay array that is going to store the data in array format and this is the array sum whatever data we are having inside the array that is going to sum all the data now once i get this one now initially we have assigned the value as 0 i'll copy this one here i'm going to paste total price plus and equal to whatever we are having inside this one now here let me just change the variable product values i'll copy this and here i'm just going to paste okay this is the simple way of getting the total price first i'm just storing all the prices inside the array i'm doing array sum i'm storing inside this variable first i have initialized the value as 0 first whatever value i'm getting here that will be stored here again whatever value i'll be getting here this plus this again this plus again this plus this this plus this okay it keeps on adding like that and i will be getting the total price now using this we have access the total price from the cart now next what we are going to see how to insert the data inside the database and also how to get the quantity of the price okay if i am having same items and the quantity is 5 how to get that quantity we are going to work on that and also we are going to see how to get invoice number how to display whether the status is pending or incomplete or whatever it is we are going to see in next session okay if you want you can just take the screenshot of this okay if you are getting confused you can just type by yourself unless and until you don't type by yourself you will never understand the concepts okay so you can just take the screenshot of this type by yourself practice by yourself if you are not understanding keep watching the video again and again unless and until you understand understanding is very important unless and until you don't understand you will never understand the concepts in next session we are going to see the remaining parts